Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Is This Control? Please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube, YouTube channel, hit the like button, and also share the link. Today I'll be I'll be doing tutorial on how to put a signature tool based on a request by one Mr. Evoca and our how to do back pocket. So today I'll be showing us how to cut a signature top very quickly. A signature top very quickly. Now I want you to know that there is nothing difficult in cutting a signature top. All you need to do is make sure you have your accurate measurement and make sure you are able to divide your measurement accordingly. Once you are able to divide your measurement, then you are sure that you will have your signature roots or your signature top very correctly. Now things that you need to cut your signature top. Number one, you need the length. Number two, you need the shoulder or back, whichever one you prefer to call it. Three, you need your sleeve. That's your, your full length, your back or shoulder, your sleeve length. Thirdly, uh, fourthly, you need your neck. That's a round neck. And also, you need your chest. You need your chest. And as the case may be, you may also measure tummy. You may measure tummy as well. Also, you need that muzzle. Some, some, you know, some, some customers, they may have this kind of muzzle that their muscle may be very big. That if you want to assume what is there, you may end up giving them the wrong thing. So you, you need to measure that muscle measurement, that round. Also, you need the round sleeve, which is that wrist. You need that for you to be able to do the cuff links and it will be firm, not too tight and not too open. Don't worry, maybe anytime from now, I'll do tutorial on how to do that placket by the size and then I will upload it online so that you can see. So these are the things you need. And for you also to now fold your fabrics, you consider your length, the length of your top, then you had your seam allowance for the shoulder or the back joint. Also, you had the folding allowance. That's number one. For the back, you, mark, you measure your back. Some may prefer to measure the full back. Now, there is a shoulder bone at your shoulder. So measure the neck bone to that shoulder bone for you to be able to get the back measurement. So then you add the same allowance to that one before you can apply it. Thirdly, for your neck, also I'll show you how to calculate the neck bone and marking. For the chest, you need to measure that chest and then divide it by four as well. Then you add your same allowance to it. So, very quickly, let's go. And don't forget, if you have any question or you have any request, you can make use of our comment section to drop your comments about the video and also you can make your request. So we we'll always deliver it to you. This one I'm about to do is also a request by somebody. So let's go. Now, the length of this particular measurement that I'll be using, the length is 35. Now, 35, 35 plus half inches, same allowance, gives us 35 and half. You mark it. And then, add a minimum of 2 inches for folding allowance on this front piece. So now, we have 35 and half. Also, you add your two inches in allowance. Now, this is our length. Now, let's proceed to the shoulder part. Now, the shoulder measurement for this particular cylinder top is nine and a half. Nine and a half. So, nine and a half plus seam allowance, which is half inches, gives us ten. So, mark your ten. As you can see, you mark your ten. Mark the ten. Now, as the case may be, for this armhole, mostly we measure armhole for women whenever we are making armhole, you know, blouse and the like for women. But for men also, you can also measure their armhole so that you have a very tight or bogus armhole. And also, you may also decide to use your initiatives if you have been doing it from experience. But for me, what I do mostly is I mark for this kind of this kind of measurement, this kind of size, I measure nine inches. Now, this nine inches will be small. But this one I'm marking nine inches is after joining the shoulder that I want to fix the sleeve. Then I will trim the sleeve to the appropriate measurement that I want to prevent having a bogus ample. So this is nine inches. Now let's apply. The body, the chest for this for this person is 47. So 47 divided by, by 2 gives you 23 and half. So 23 and half divided by 2 gives you what's that? You see 11 quarter, 11 and a half quarter, right? 11 and a half quarter. So approximately 12. 
So this is the 12, meaning this is the chest for the person. So let's add one inches seam allowance for this person by the side. So then from here, you curve. I love using freehand sketch most of the time. So we have 13 here. So you go down. For this person, the chest and the tummy is equivalent. So there's no need applying the chest measurement. But what you consider for men mostly is there are some men who ask hip. Some of them ask big hip. And you have to consider it when you are sewing their signature top so that the down part of your signature dress that you make for them won't be tight and they have difficulty putting it on. So that is the reason why you see that I added one inches here to make allowance for this hip. So meaning we have 19 here. We have 13 here rather. Plus that one inches that I added for hip allowance. This was the 14 that I pulled my fabrics with. So for So this gives us this and then you can connect it so you slant it a little and that is why you see some signature that it has a bit a little slant making the down part of that signature a bit wider than the chest part for you to have free access when you are wearing it. So now let's go to the shoulder and to the neck. Now for this neck, for this person the neck is... 17. Now, averagely or standardly, for, standard for adults, when you are marking neck, except the person has a very big neck that the neck is around 20 or like, but for somebody that neck is 17, you make the width two and a half to avoid the singlet of that fellow coming out when the person wears the dress, two and a half for the width, and then the depth. Because of the kind of shoulder that will be doing this, the shoulder will have an overlap of like one and a half inches to the front. So, meaning we'll be deducting that one and a half from this neck depth so that we don't have too big uh we don't have the neck being too big so this will be making the depth three and a half for this fellow so then you curve it out so as it is this way if you place your measure at the proof to measure it round it gives you five and a half so this is twofold five and a half plus five and a half gives us eleven so for this back the back part also you are marking two and a half so two and a half plus two and a half gives you five inches. So five plus eleven gives you sixteen. And by the time you are using your facing to turn this neck in, it makes this neck come down a little bit. And also the one and a half that the back is bringing, by the time you join it, gives it an additional one inch. So it makes it seventeen for this neck. So by so doing, you have two and a half for the width and three and a half for the depth. So now and then at this shoulder, it is advisable. Because the shoulder is a bit slant. So you mark 0 0.75 for this shoulder and then you connect it to the neck. Bring it that way to the neck. And with this, we have the senator top for the front. So please, let's cut this out very quickly. So this slant. Now this is our 13, then from here, you slant it a little until you exhaust the one inch because of the heat for the heat allowance. The same way we had one inch to the belt, the belt trouser to give it pocket allowance. So we make allowance for that key to have free access when we are wearing it. So now this takes us to the back part. So fold your material, the fabrics this way. The same width we used in the first place. This one we use, which is 14 inches. This is 14 inches. There are several other ways you can apply to achieve the same thing. But I'm trying to give you the one I consider simplest. You can make allowance for your slit by the side by adding one inch. So that the slit, by the time you are folding the slit, it will be wider. But this way, I'm just giving you more like the basics. So from there, you can add your own touch as you want it to look. So, on the signature top, now as you can see, we have 14 inches here. Now, at the shoulder part, 
have three have three inches to the shoulder let the back be a little bit excess with three inches at this shoulder part so it will form an overlap at the shoulder this way so we have three inches excess here so now at this point for the cutting not to be stressful just cut it out and when you are cutting it out you slant this place a bit with one and a half inches because we are still going to be trimming the shoulder for the back as well so we cut it out so that you can conveniently cut the back So as it is this way, what you want to do now is this. I'm trying to give you shortcuts. So move the front part upward. Let it be equal. For you to have the same amount of inch, that's 0 0.75 trimmed from the back part for the back. So you also trim this part. This way. Then now move it back. You can as well mark the 0 0.75 on the back part and trim. You still achieve the same thing. Now, you bend the excess for considering the same allowance. As you can see there. Cut this part. Oh, let us just. You may use iron. Okay, let me quickly iron this. So now, here is our back piece. So the three inches excess. As you can see, the three inches, so I've ironed it, so now it's not overlapping. Now, let's check out, let's consider the neck now. Get it? So this is six quarter. Six quarter plus six quarter gives you twelve and a half. So twelve and a half, this is two inches width for two pieces. So two plus two and a half plus two and a half gives you five. Plus twelve and a half gives you seventeen and a half. By the time you join half inches seam, from this shoulder, it comes back to 17. So that gives you your neck. So meaning it will be exactly what you measured for your client or for yourself. So now, the purpose of the one and a half you added when you were covering this part is to allow you have your shoulder back when you fold it. Because why? It's going there is going to be an excess on this part for you to have a very good overlap at the shoulder part. So now, what do you want to do now? Measure now. Measure the shoulder. The shoulder is nine and a half, so that's ten. Now, same allowance, mark. Now, cut your shoulder. And then, for the neck, easily just go through your, the measurement you already had. And then, open it. So, you go this way. And then, call. So this way, you have the neck. So as it is, this is our two and a half. So two and a half plus two and a half gives you five. So the six quarter gives you twelve and a half. Five and a half, uh, five plus twelve and a half gives you seventeen and a half. By the time you join this shoulder with the half inch seam allowance, you have your seventeen. So this way, you have your body measurement. Twelve plus one gives you thirteen, which is one inch for seam allowance. The one inch here, which makes it fourteen is for the hip allowance. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to cut the senator top. Don't worry, very soon I will do, maybe in my next video, I will do how to cut the sleeve, either for senator and also the suit sleeve. I will also be doing a video on how to cut the belt trouser using some other measurements for you to have some good fitting, like the updated version of how to cut uh, uh, the belt trouser. So please don't forget to like this video, share the link, and tell your friends about the video. Also, you can also check out for our previous videos. So see you in our next tutorial. Thank you.